by Linda Hu. She's an economist at Oxford University. Linda, thank you so much for joining us in the studio today. How surprised were you? We were expecting tremendous growth uh, from China, but this goes to support that actually they need to do something to cool the economy off. Yes, that would, I think, be what a lot of markets would be reading into it. I think the only thing that gives me hesitation here is that inflation is so low. So one interpretation is that because of the recession, there was one in China, um, you know, growing at 6% for them was a, was a very slow pace. If you have a very big output gap, so that is you're growing below trend, it's very possible to grow faster than trend. So trend is about 9%. They're growing at 11.9% and have low rates of inflation. Of course, I don't entirely believe that. <laughs> so, so what's your forecast for the future? For inflation, for example, could we see you know, a 10, 15 percent rise in the next couple of years, which would really be a concern for asset bubbles? Oh, very much so. So the other really puzzling thing is that M2, the broad measure of money, is up nearly 30 percent year on year. If you have that much money supply in your economy, inflation historically in China will follow. And that's where the pressure on the yuan uh, comes into play because if that's the case, then you've got lots of liquidity, potentially double digit inflation. They want to hike interest rates. That's going to worsen the interest rate differential with the United States, which is zero percent. You can just see more hot money chasing that. At the moment, it's a 500 basis point differential. So capital inflows to China worsens liquidity. UN's got to appreciate. Ellen, I like the word puzzling. How difficult is it for, for the government, first of all, to know exactly what to do at this point? and also for economists and analysts to analyze the situation over there in China. It's very difficult and in part it's the way that they present the statistics. So they only show you year-on-year -year figures and if you listen to their news conference they said well part of this is a base effect. So that means because they only report year-on-year -year, this little bit of Chinese recession I was talking about earlier actually hit in the last three months of 2008 and the first quarter of 2009. So when you only make this kind of comparison it's hard to know what happened quarter on quarter and the output gap that I'm talking about is almost impossible to estimate for China because they don't measure things like unemployment across the country. So this is why analysts will have a lot of different takes. But I think the bottom line is Chinese growth is fast, but everybody will be watching for liquidity bubbles because, look, house prices are up a lot year on year. Linda, we only have 20 seconds. When are they going to raise interest rates or revalue the currency? Uh, next few months, so long as Western pressure doesn't make it look like the Chinese caved. Linda, great to speak to you. Thank you so much.